coming as a surprise, but when Once Upon a Time first started, I was a huge fan of their Snow White character. I have found that as I've gotten older, I've become really, really attached to the fairy tale of Snow White. I just see so many possibilities and things about it that it's really become one of my favorite fairy tales, even though I hated it for like most of my childhood life because I didn't like the Disney movie, but I have really learned to love the movie and Snow White in general. So I'm always on the lookout for like really good Snow White adaptations and in the beginning I thought they were going down a really good track. But as it's gone further along, especially with season two, I have found that they, like many other adaptations of Snow White, have really kind of missed what the story was about. And when they were trying to make it new and modern and hip and fix it up, all they really did was kind of make it worse. I think a lot of people are uncomfortable with just making the Snow White character attractive and focusing on her fairness as a thing about attractiveness. They're trying to make her a symbol of purity or make her someone, you know, powerful or whatever. But the thing about it is that at the heart of the Snow White myth, um, if we just want to base it on the Grimm's version, although there were many other cultural um, variants of the Snow White tale as we know it, the reality of it is that the fairness of Snow White has nothing to do with her personality or her purity. It has to do with her looks. Snow White is the fairest in the land because she's the prettiest in the land. It doesn't have to do with her being nice or sweet. I mean, if we think about it, there's no way that it could be that she was nice or sweet because if that was the indicator, then the evil queen could never be the fairest in the land to begin with. So obviously, when we change her into being a pure thing, it's to make it more palpable for a modern day audience, which I legitimately understand. However, one, I don't think it's always entirely necessary because, you know, if you're adding on to the character, you can still have the layer of, like, jealousy because I think that's something that we can all understand to some level and we expect it from the story with Snow White myth. But if you want to just go off on that, you cannot turn her into something that she's not as a way to make it more modern and then not go through with it. Like, like I, in my Snow White and the Huntsman film, um, film review, I talked about how that where, where that movie goes wrong is that it wants to talk about Snow White being noble and whatever, but she never does anything worthy of that to begin with. She never is noble. She never is capable. She never does anything to really prove herself to anyone except being born. So you cannot, you know want to make it so that it's about her when you don't do anything with her. I felt like in this regard Mirror Mirror at least admitted that it was trying to be fun and shallow and didn't try to give us any kind of like convoluted messages about goodness or whatever. It was just like this is Snow White, she's the prettiest in the land, pretty costumes, whatever. And once upon a time I thought initially was gonna just do it regularly. And I like the Snow White they did, she was kind of like a little bit action girly and usually this annoys me but they never kind of like made her not be feminine as a way to like make her um, an action girl. She never lost her femininity as a result. But now with the death of Korra and how that came about, they were doing this whole thing where because Mary Margaret killed Korra, um, she is now tainted and dark and will destroy herself and it's just so irritating to watch. The idea that Snow White cannot do anything that would make, that is human, like feeling anger or hate, makes her impure is ridiculous. I mean, she's human. She has to feel those things. Even if this is last, it's human. And the thing about it too with Korra is that, first of all, let me clarify. I love Korra. I thought she was a really good villain who was gone way too soon. But just to kind of touch on this, you are up against a woman who killed your mother, killed your newly found maternal figure in Mrs. Padibor, um, 
was going to use her powers to kill you off and take your biological grandson. And yet, we are expected to believe that Snow White has a sort of moral quandary about her death. Now, how she did it with Regina being involved, of course, was horrible and that she should feel guilty for. But at the same time, even before she did that, this whole thing was about, you're doing this for revenge and it's bad. I'm like, she's not doing it necessarily for revenge, but self-perseverance. Cora is going to kill them. And it's like, it's, and the thing about it too is like, it's funny that it's totally okay for David to kill somebody. But if Snow White does it, no, she's going to be tainted and not pure and her heart won't be as good anymore. It's just kind of like, what are you talking about? First of all, no one in the universe of Once Upon a Time will blame Snow White for her actions. No one will go to her and say, you were wrong to do this, besides Regina. No one's going to be like, you should feel horrible for this, you'll feel guilty, because no one gives a shit about Regina or Cora. So no one is going to be like, you should feel guilty about this. All of this is a self, self, um, self-inflicted moral angst that is honestly irritating to watch because it's like, you are mourning Cora more than Cora's own child in this episode. Like, you're going to Regina saying, kill me, please kill me, so I cannot feel bad anymore. I'm just like, what are you doing? It, it honestly, where it's meant to make you feel sympathetic. I'm sure some people do feel sympathetic towards her. But for me personally, I just kind of felt like, can you just stop talking? Because it, it's so over the top and not genuine. Because no one would feel that way. At least in the regard, it never felt like it was her feeling bad for having Regina kill Cora. It also felt like she just felt bad because Cora was dead. And I'm like, that's not human. That's not how people react. Yes, she should feel some guilt about it, but for her to be taken to her bed and bedridden the whole day while Cora's own child is not seen acting that kind of way is just ridiculous. It automatically just turns me off because it's like, you are not even the one who lost someone, but you have the audacity to feel this kind of, this, this pain because of this, but Regina doesn't. And if she, if she did, we think she'd be in hysterical because she's the villain. So it, it just, it's just so ungenuine. And then afterwards, when she finds out that Geppetto lied about that, about her being able to go with Emma, and she smacks Geppetto, and then she's like, oh my god, how did I do that? I'm like, are you serious? What mother would not do worse to a man who lied to them about something so serious? She missed out on 28 years of her daughter's life because of Geppetto's lie. 28 years that she will never ever get back. She missed her daughter's first steps, her daughter's first kiss. She, her daughter had a hard life and that could have been avoided because of her being there and that wasn't the case. She's lucky she didn't punch the shit out of Geppetto. But no, her doing that means that she's dark and evil. I'm just like, this is stupid. This is stupid because what they're doing is like, you're turning her into a character. You're turning her into a purity suit. And the thing about Snow White is that while she is good and has a lot of the layers of a purity suit, she is not perfect. One of the reasons why she... Because the thing about Snow White is that she gets attacked three times um, in, the, in the Grimm's version. Once with the comb, once with, the, with the, like a girdle, and another time with the... and then the last time with the apple. And the reason why the apple and the last time get her is because she is told it's going to make her more beautiful. Like, that appeals to her vanity. She was never supposed to be perfect to begin with. And let's not forget, at the end of Snow White, she and her husband watch as a stepmother dances on hot coals until she dies. You know? So it's like, it's so pretentious and, and not at all what the story was ever about. And at the same time, if they were going to give Snow White a moral quandary and morals to deal with, there were better ways to handle this. Like, how about the fact that she is passively evil. And I don't, I don't mean that to say like she's evil, but I mean like passively. She's been responsible for so many things. You know, she, every person that was affected by that curse, it was Snow White's fault. In the sense that, and not, not like I'm putting all the blame on her, but I'm saying like if they were to give her a moral issue, if she had allowed Regina to be dead and died in a day of execution, then the curse would never would have happened. She would have had Emma, they would have had a happily ever after, 
but she didn't do it because she would feel bad about it. And the thing about too about her thing with Regina is that she has all this care for Regina and wants her to be so changed and whatever. But there is never any indication to show why they have such a strong bond. Like I don't understand why she cares so much if Regina is good or not. Like the thing about it is that it's hard to tell because Lana Perilla is playing her younger self. But just thinking about it, like they're not that far apart in age. So she's supposed to be like a teenager in the flashbacks, and I think Snow's like twelve or something. Like they don't have that far apart in age difference to have a real mother daughter relationship. Like, and if they do, when did that happen? Because it seemed like yeah, she saved you one day, but then right after we see her hating you passively. So when was there ever this time where you felt a real connection to her? That one time saving you on a horse does not nullify like trying to kill you like 3,000 million times. Like, I'm sorry, girl. Too much. They keep trying to make it seem like, like Snow owes Regina something. Like, Snow, Snow, I'm team Regina. Don't get me wrong. Even though Regina be wrong and she be crazy sometimes, I'm team Regina. But let's be real. Snow, you owe her shit. Okay? You want to get rid of her, get rid of her. Stop trying to feel bad about it, trying to moralize and whatever. Like, stop. It's frustrating because it's not how people think. And I understand if they're trying to make her, like, a higher moral authority. But anyway, it doesn't work because there's no reason for her to be that. So what? You're a queen. Whatever. Killing someone who is, at least is how I feel about it. I'm not supporting the death penalty. And I don't think that it's, I don't support the death penalty. But at the same time, in these kind of setting shows, I don't like this whole idea of that you kill someone who tries to kill you that suddenly it makes you just as bad as them. Like, I don't get that. Like... Self-defense is called self defense for a reason. It's not as if you went out and killed Regina, like, I hate you, blah, blah, blah. She tried to kill you. If you kill her in self-defense, or you put her to justice, or whatever you want to call it, like, that's one thing. But it's not as if you do this, and all of a sudden it's like, I'm just going to kill everyone. Blah, 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 blah. Like, there's a reason why Superman doesn't kill. There's a reason why Batman doesn't kill. There's a reason why Wonder Woman don't give a fuck. But there's a reason why those two characters don't kill. If Superman crosses that line and starts killing people, then we're going to have this super-powered god being, making decisions for everyday people. You're the king and queen of this small, uh, of this place that we don't even know how big it is. You're the king and queen. It's your job to keep law and order. You know, and you don't do that. They failed their duty to their people. Let that be the moral conscience that you allowed this stuff to happen, that you could have ended it sooner, but you chose not to. No, you do this kind of bullshit, half-handed moral lesson to make Snow White pure and good and whatever. It's like, well, she's not. It's not about purity and goodness, it's about beauty. And if you want to make it deeper than that, then make it actually mean something. Don't make it like some kind of stupid, wishy-washy, purity sue bullshit. Because it's just boring to watch. And you had such a good Snow White character. Why are you trying to moralize her so much to make her something that she never was supposed to be to begin with? But anyway, if you do want to see a really good Snow White adaptation, well, a really good Snow White character, I recommend The Stepsister Scheme by Jim C. Hines. It's called Part of the Princess series. It's four books. Um, their Cinderella, Snow White, and Sleeping Beauty are fucking excellent. Love these books. I'll be doing a proper review on them soon -y. But, um, yeah.